Hello friends, welcome to Creative Zone. In this part, I'm going to tell you about P-type and N-type semiconductor. Actually, semiconductor classifications, but P-type and N-type both are major topic. That's why title is P-type and N-type semiconductor. But if you miss my last video, then watch that first. Link in description box. Whatever. Let's begin today's one. Semiconductor. In previous video, I told you a little bit about semiconductor. There I forgot to tell example of semiconductor. Germanium and silicon both are very common semiconductor. But silicon widely used to make electronics component. Because you know, silicon is main element of sand. And sand is available in desert. <laughs> anyway. But germanium is expensive than silicon. That's why most of electronics component made by silicon. Okay. Semiconductor classifications. There are two kinds of semiconductor, which are intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Okay, intrinsic semiconductor. Actually, it's pure semiconductor. Whatever. Focus on the electron configuration first. So, their valency are same, which is 4. And we know every atom want to be neutral by fill 8 electron in outer orbit. So, germanium or silicon need 4 extra electron to be neutral. Okay, look at the picture. Here I took some atom of germanium and every atom need for electron to neutral. You can take silicon also, it doesn't differ. Anyway, if I bring these atoms closer, then these atoms sharing their electron each other and create a bond known as covalent bond. Now see every atoms get 8 electron in outer orbit and also they are neutral. Now notice this stretch are only possible in absolute zero temperature. But in room temperature, I mean 25 degree centigrade, you will notice some difference. Actually in room temperature some covalent bond broke up and every broke up position we got a free electron and hole. This free electron can transport electricity. Now extrinsic semiconductor, it's a very expensive process. We can take free electron from intrinsic semiconductor easily, but why need extrinsic? Actually by using intrinsic semiconductor you cannot build complex component because there are not enough free electron to flow electricity properly. Need some doping to get intrinsic to extrinsic semiconductor, which I told in my last video. Anyway, there are two kind of extrinsic semiconductor, P-type and N-type semiconductor. Okay, first P-type. If we replace a germanium atom by valency 3 elements atom, like boron, uh, aluminium, gallium, etc. Then we will get a hole. Wait, why hole? After replace this atom, they again try to create covalent bond. All good, just lack of an electron. This lack create a hole. When another electron came to fill this hole to stable this lack, then that electron create a hole again. It's a continuous process. Hole moving one place to another place and mind it all is positive charge carrier. But how? Okay, simply thing, electron has negative charge and we know only positive charge can neutral negative charge. If a hole filled by an electron, we can say this is a neutral position. So hole is positive and electron is negatively charged. Anyway, conclusion of P-type semiconductor. Holes are majority carrier and electrons are minority carrier to transport electricity. Now entire. If you replace a germanium atom by valency 5 elements atom like phosphorus, arsenic, uh, antimony, etc. Then we will get complete covalent bond and also an extra electron. See this extra electron is completely free. So yet this free electron transport electricity. Mind it, entire semiconductor create a few holes also. Wait, wait, there are no way to create a hole. But where they came from? Okay, actually few covalent bond automatically broke up for um, temperature variation like intrinsic semiconductor and create few holes. These are not more effective. So in entire semiconductor, electrons are majority carrier and holes are minority carrier to transport electricity. That's all of this topic. See you on next part. Stay with Creative Zone. Have a nice day.